Hello, my name is host Eric. I'm the host of Talking Famous People, and I am here with assorted famous people and hosts in the room, including Taylor, Unipi, Kit Kats, JD, J Mott, Case, Ken C, Not Host, Mark the Infallible One, Paramount Mutagen, Robert Wiseman, uh, whose video is not going to make it up there, Robert Wiseman. I'm sorry because I fucked up the audio on that video. And famous person Wobble. Anyway, let's talk about this notion of the need for external verification of truth being related to whether or not you have extroverted intuition or introverted intuition and where it lands in the stack. So most people I believe who have who have either intuition very low in the stack are going to uh, not really trust their own instincts about the truth and are going to seek external signs that it is in fact true. So they're the people who say, well, that guy must be right. He has the biggest, uh, he has the most impressive title or most impressive letters after his name. Those are individuals who are probably going to have in either in low in the stack, especially nice. if they have ni low in the stack. And uh, the, the well, people who, in contrast, have ni high in the stack are going to be resistant to external data that is contrary to their intuitive truths, to a certain extent as they should be, because remember, introverted intuition. It's about things that are simply and obviously true because they fit in some sense and because they're right in some core fundamental underlying sense of the integrity of the thing. So it does make sense that that ought to be trusted in general over contrary data if the data is a little iffy. Sometimes, of course, it does lead them astray or and it does so, I think, because it had it, when it, they're relying on it in too small of a uh, framework. However, extroverted intuition can also lead one astray in the sense that I have a tendency to necessarily think, well, there's got to be some other way to do that. There's got to be some other way. And even when there's no other way, even when experience and life and a million bits of logic in the world tell me there's no other way, I would still think there's got to be some other way around this thing. And so if I'm stuck in traffic, for example, I know this is fucking stupid, Eric. Don't do it. But I will get off the freeway and I will get onto the surface street because I refuse to sit in this traffic anymore only to find myself in worse traffic on the surface street, only to find myself heading the opposite direction to avoiding the traffic. But, you know, and, and just like refusing to admit defeat and just sit in the fucking traffic, right? That's called faith. That's called blind, stupid faith. You know? So that's what NE does in the dominant slot. And NI in the dominant slot makes you go, um, there's no way that there's a better way to get there. This this is the best way. I know that already. I can tell. I know there's more shit over there. But see, here's the thing. Occasionally, NE's right. And they go, I just thought of a way that I bet it's empty right now. And like, every once in a while, you know? And then you go, ha I saved three minutes. And the rest, if you look at out of all the other instances, it's like, aha, I wasted 45 hours. <laughs> you did. I can't hear you. Sorry. Who's talking? Robert, you're really super low in volume. Oh, sorry, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I hear somebody talking super low volume. I don't know who it is. Okay, so uh, that's my thoughts on this in general about the relationship between N, E, N, I, and the need for external verification of, of your perceived truths. I would open the floor for thoughts if anybody has any. I said it open. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, thinking about N, I. It's like occasionally I'll get into what you said where I think my way is the best way, but usually I try not to do that because like 90% of the time or more I am right, but that 10% has scarred me, so. <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. You guys are usually right. I actually they're usually right, but the wrong ones can be doozies. It's, it's, it's true. Uh, especially if I do with the relationship, INFJ males, they, uh, you know, they have a lot of a lot of stick to itiveness. Let's put it that way. You don't think so? You don't think ISJ males have a lot of stick to itiveness in relationships? 
they usually are right, and ENFPs are usually also right, and that is the, the truth of the world. See, well, uh, I, I think... Uh, can I... Go ahead. Talk, is that okay? Yeah, of course. I think uh, maybe there should be less talk about how INFJs are right a lot, because I know from my own life, there's been plenty of times that I've been wrong, and I don't know, I, I think I'd rather have developed being able to be right more often than just have the illusion of being right. I don't well, know if that makes sense. Self-awareness is important. There's nothing worse than everyone else thinking that they're right when the right is actually wrong and no one is right. What the hell is everyone talking about? <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's it's about a series of individual things. For example, if you and I were, I were to, to have a dispute about which store is closer, and you say, no, we should go to, to Ralph's because it's just down the street. And I say, no, we should go to Bonds. It's closer. One of us would be right and one of us would be wrong. Depends. How how closer? What's the closer? <laughs> well, I mean, if we've established in the first place that we're arguing about which one is closer, closer is a pretty straightforward thing we're to measure, wrong. right? And I certainly hope that you <laughs> both argue it out amongst yourselves. And I uh, would hope that I could devise some kind of thing that this is going to be poetic and something nice comes out of this. Let's hear it. If you, if you uh, have to cross state lines to get to the other store, that's probably the wrong oh, one. Yes, to go across borders. You know that you have to have a, uh, a visa? Or a we will not let petty things passport. like visas stop us from crossing them. To go to the United States. It's craziness. It's so fuck crazy. What the fuck has happened to this world? So you can learn to swim. You can... Look, you guys have been playing fast and loose with the maple syrup supply for a long time now. <laughs> this is this is the natural consequence of that. Now you have to have a visa to come to America. You should you should have kicked <laughs> down with more of the syrup. Uh, the northern part of the United States is. Um, Traditionally, like uh, the worst part, like so, everyone's like, ah, oh, uh, the worst <laughs> part of the United States, and then they go to the United States. Terrible what there. The hell? <laughs> so, now no trade, no nothing, and then to go between, it's so hard. What the hell is going on here? What? Where are the benefits of anything? Who are they trying to say? I just don't understand. They're, they're it's because of terror trying to fight some fucking terrorists for what? nothing. There's no terrorists. They're, they're, <laughs> Hell's Angels are the worst fucking terrorists <laughs> ever, and no one fucking and was like, oh, they're all cool. And like, no, let me tell you, Hell's Angels are the fucking they're the deal, man. They're, they're Robert, I think I know what the border controls are for. In my own town. Well, but Robert, I mean, can you imagine? Uh, can you imagine a bunch of French Canadians coming down here? That would just be crazy. What would we do? It's an invasion of whimsy. We we'd be overrun by baguettes and berets. And French fries. Mm -hmm. And wow. French fries. <laughs> you don't think they want to go back? I, I don't know if they do. It's a thing. You go visit, and like your country's good, but our country's better. But look, it's like it's like if we let you guys in, one day it's like normal, next day it's nothing but croissant shops everywhere you look. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Well, you might make some money, but I mean yeah, sure. Well, well, <laughs> Who hasn't made money off a croissant well, shop before? Assholes. <laughs> uh, assholes like us. Uh I'll qualify this as different assholes. That's culture. It's called culture. Culture? Okay. Well, I like culture. 
Without culture, we wouldn't have yogurt. Then, yeah, exactly. What? You mean you're not appreciating my puns, Taylor? Is that, is that what you're trying to indicate there? I thought that facial expression I was... Uh, I thought the facial expression was I'm condemning. Not <laughs> no, no, no. I like it a lot. The United States like 50 different, like, different... Uh, actual like points of like where they're going at it's crazy i, I can't like robert wiseman <laughs> who who has who has 50 different points united states oh because of the 50 different states you mean every state's different yep well isn't saskatchewan different from montreal yep yeah. <laughs> That's where they keep the Sasquatches. That's why it's called Saskatchewan. Well, Saskatchewan is, Sa uh, is Re Regina is the capital, but Saskatoon is the capital, but Saskatchewan is the province, right? We're Americans. We don't the care. The province <laughs> is probably like, I don't know, like you take Missouri, take a... Mississippi, also like, you imagine the the great length of it. It's it's fucking big, right? But everyone in Canada lives on the edge of the United States, right? This is amazing. That's where all the the cities are. That's where all the country is. So yeah, I imagine. Cool. I imagine well, as a country is we we live in this situation where oh no it's cool we come over to your country back and forth it's all cool <coughs> all sudden, what the fuck oh you need a you need your passport and all this shit well it, it's like, Robert it's because of the following thing. People. Let me explain why. You see, a lot of Americans are racist against Mexicans. We, they really want to just keep the Mexicans out. But unfortunately for you guys, the nature of the law is such that we have to treat everybody the same. So, what the fuck is your problem? I, I, not my, my, not my policy. Don't blame me. I didn't Sorry. come up with that policy. Not my immigration policy. I don't approve of. Yes, it is. You're U.S. That doesn't make it my policy. It just makes it Eric, a policy you go that. Under the U.S., you cannot argue again. I'm just bullshitting. <laughs> the... Honestly, who do we vote for? What do we do? What is our? Uh, what can we do as citizens? What What is there? What is our power? Right. Well. Power to rebel. No, I, I mean. You can't Revolution. rebel with arms. You don't want to use any arms. That's that's not going to work. It's not the 1700s. Muskets aren't going to do us any good. J Matt, you've been trying to talk. I want to get your voice in on this here. You've been cut off on a few occasions. I don't remember what I was talking about. Oh, not too. You on here, Eric. I love you. Thank you. Ken C, do you have any thoughts on this topic in general? I don't know what we're talking about now. Canada, apparently. Uh, nothing to really contribute. Just, uh, you know. It's that place um, north of us. Yeah, I remember now. Oh, so Jay Mac, go ahead. Read it, but the fact that there was a lot of people that hated the fact that they wanted to create a United States. <laughs> Jay Matt, you ready? I don't, I don't know. know. I'm a Quebecer. <laughs> it's. But, <laughs> We're going to keep trying until we see we can get you in here, J-Matt. J-Matt, try again. You guys fucking did it. It's the whimsy stage. Uh, this is the whimsy stage. You're right. I told you we'd find some whimsy tonight. We did. Oh, my gosh. Robert Wiseman, that is just darling. What you are saying about Saskatchewan is absolutely adorable. It is. Yes. Saskatchewan is actually a brewing province. I want to go there. I want to go get a cabin in the woods in Saskatchewan. Catch me some Sasquatches. 
Okay, uh, how about you, um, not host Mark the Infallible? Any comments? Trump 2016. Okay, Trump 2016. Paramount Mutagen, do you got any comments? <laughs> Apparently not. Robert Wiseman, we've, we've gotten a bulk of, of your thoughts on this. So let's go down to Unify. Or, I'm sorry, Taylor. Go ahead, Taylor. Any thoughts on Canada? <laughs> I would just encourage Robert Wiseman to speak his thoughts if he has any more about anything. I okay, don't know I, I'll come back to him. him. I'll come back to him. I'll just let me come back around to him. Unify, any thoughts? Not that I know. Yeah, I would like to hear Robert. Okay, Wobble, any thoughts? Well, what are we going to do when everything gives up? When America gives up? So you said? Well, that's a, oh my god, if the mayor gives up, what the hell am I going to do with my money? I have no money now. Well, if America gives up, if anything gives up, what are we going to do, right? So where are we at? I guess it's the same way where the same people who discovered the place, or so-called discovered, you go for the same <laughs> places. <laughs> And where were they? And exactly the same, like, same big tribes, whatever the most powerful, whatever the stuff was. Are you talking about the Indians? Uh, First Nation, you mean? I'm, the Native Americans? The First Nation. First Nation, motherfucker. I, Jews. <laughs> oh, okay. Here, here, the First Nation. I, I get you saying, all right, don't call them Indians, call them Native Americans. If I call them Native yeah. Americans, you say, no, you have that's to call them First Nation. That's not even a description of a people. That's a description of their political status. No, it wasn't. They were not one nation. Of course. It's exactly that. And it's about uh, how you introduce uh, delicate situations. It's delicate, huh? What makes it delicate? Well, for me, when I was 14, uh, they had uh, the Oka crisis, which was this uh, situation where uh, they were like, look, we're going to fucking build some condos over your fucking land. And they're like, no, this is where we bury our young or old or whatever. And they were like super mad. And the tribes, and they, they went fucking ballistic, and rightfully so. I think if I was in their situation, I would do the same. And so my experience was, I'd cycle through, and then I saw, like, ah, for the first time, military presence? What the hell? That's so weird. And, like, this whole thing, like, uh, well, for Americans, I'm sure you're all... Uh, Oh, guns and shit and whatever, but no, come on. This is not the real world. The real world is we get along right. We get our solutions fucking fixed, right? No. The hell is wrong with the fucking world? I agree. I would interject I that uh, we can use guns to help each other get along. <laughs> But, but I want to know what the second thing you said was. Guns and shins? Who the hell is... What the fuck is wrong with everyone? Is everyone fucking nuts? Robert, what political position do you hold? I, I think I'm... I pretend to be leftist, but I'm not. I'm really central. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, uh, he's from a, I, I grew up a lot way in my family. <laughs> this is some Canadian style rebellion here. I mean, this is some serious Canadian style rebellion. Uh, a drunk Canadian calls in and talks about his centrist politics. <laughs> yeah, true. Because <laughs> you guys are bad at military that way, I have to say. <laughs> We're bad at military? I mean, we shouldn't use our military the way we do, or what? <laughs> Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you completely. I think we should be more isolationist. Every four games we win. 
Well, you know who, who fucking hates my Taiwan video is Chinese people. I've gotten a couple of angry uh, comments from Chinese people who can't believe that I would fucking suggest Taiwanese independence. You know, and, and they have they. No, they don't. Uh, Canadians have accepted that. You know that, but it, you've it, accepted it, Taiwanese it, independence, uh, marriages or whatever. Canadians accept. Isn't that the weirdest thing too? Like I don't even, actually. I don't know what I'm going with this. Do you really eat a lot of maple syrup? Uh, maple syrup, uh, if you go sugar, like just, uh, you know, at the... Me too, you know, Kit Kat. You know, with the bun. <laughs> Aunt Jemima? <laughs> Are you talking about Aunt Jemima? Yeah, that's corn syrup. And then you go maple syrup. I'm sorry, but maple syrup, but you're like, oh, yeah, not... You understand what it is to be a foodie. To be a what? Be a foodie. A foodie. I see. Yeah, I like maple. I've had real maple maple syrup before too. It's you really know, good. Like taste. You know, like perception and taste. Well, because the maple syrup you normally get in restaurants or whatever it has no maple syrup in it. It's just sugar, or whatever. No, and, it's not maple syrup. When right, you have not, a maple syrup, you know it. It's like when you have a tomato in season, tastes like a tomato. It tastes like that you're sucking on a Canadian tree. That's the thing I think I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> when you, when, when, maple syrup, you fucking when, know it's maple syrup. Would you say it, it tastes like sucking on a tree? Yep. A maple tree? It's like putting a maple tree yeah, in your mouth? Maple water, which I did do. You could t you just tap water. It's like March. It's fucking uh, you know hey, like. It's, I got something to show you guys. But for you guys, sure, there's no snow around. But for us, yeah, there's snow around, and well, it's selective air. It's also like where you are too. But yeah, you tap that tree, and it's like weird magic. The the fucking thing, like it just pours water. You collect I like maple syrup. I like fat like maple syrup. Water water syrup. You boil and distill. You'll turn it into maple syrup, but maple water? Holy shit. I'm ready to compete against your maple syrup. This is sugar cane. Yeah, Why did, I you rob the, did you rob Why? the LA County yeah. Arboretum? Yeah. No. The whole thing is the, the entire idea of preciseness of actually one time of year only that time of year and this type of tree tastes the best mm. Mm. what type of tree tastes the best? sugar maple sugar maples mm. well anyway the Chinese like, lady the Chinese lady next door grew this uh, maple. She's crazy with her growing sugar. Sugar maple is specific. It's so intrinsic to the taste of the whole thing. Mm. Mm. I stick with fat black lady maple syrup. Fuck yeah. Delicious. Jemima. Mm. Now, have you, do you have any furniture that's made out of maple wood? Yes. Does it taste like maple syrup? Well, wait. I'm not a good enough lover. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Okay. No. Does it look nice? Maple wood? It looks nice, right? Uh, maple wood, basically, it's, it's treated like a hardwood. But it's not good enough to uh, make nice things out of, you know what I mean? In the end, like, you know when we make things out of wood, it's about the grain? Mm-hmm. How do things look? Like the grain of it? And maple is just... I think, in effect, uh, actually everyone on this board can agree to this, but 
it's weird that the taste of everything is about the European taste, like how beachhead or whatever, but why isn't the indigenous wood looks better than the Euro model? I don't know. I think it has to do with skill and what we can do. So are you actually, telling me? Are you telling me that when you look at a piece of furniture, you can tell if the tree was grown locally by you can just feel the the quality difference? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think there's certainly a something to be said for local local sourcing, local artisanship, and stuff like that. It's very popular here in Los Angeles to have that kind of those kind of words attached to things. I thought you were in like a, I don't know a Albuquerque or something. <laughs> nope, I'm in. He did say the red, but he's not one or white. <laughs> I am in a suburb of Los Angeles called Temple City. Holy shit, that is some diverse ecology there. You mean with the, this thing? With the, sure, with the sure cane? It's because my Chinese neighbor lady waters her yard literally like three times a day. And she's got a jungle back there and she's growing sugar cane. She's taking a growing sugar cane. She grows everything you can possibly eat. She told me, I'm like, I don't know how to use this. She's always trying to give it to me. She said, what you got to do is um, is chop a piece off and boil chicken with it. And it'll come out really good. That's just told me. So I'm going to try that. I decided, all right, fuck it. I will take your sugar cane this time, old Chinese lady. And I'm going to try your idea. I'm going to boil some chicken with that. See if it works. You've probably been boiling your guinea pigs for a while. <laughs> you can boil guinea pigs. <laughs> I'm going to boil the guinea pigs. Uh, okay, any other closing thoughts here before um, why, the wise man of the forest, Robert Weissman, uh, he finishes his evening's activities as do the rest of us? Any thoughts on whimsy? Yes. Hi. With the, uh, back to like the beginning, I don't really remember what we were talking about. Uh, but the NE thing, like trying to find truth externally, does that have something to do with procrastinating as well? Like thinking that there's a better time to do something than there is right now? Awesome question, Fuck. I think so. I think for me it has to do with waiting for NI to kick in and say, now, act. And I think she's not right and I don't like the way it's set up. I typically just want to drag my feet. I'm not really sure why. And then some missing pieces fall into place and then I'll act. It's weird. I, I don't feel like I have. Uh, I don't feel like it's. It, it, it's it's there's nothing logical about it, you know. That's how I feel. Yeah. And being really good at pulling shit off at the last minute just kind of reinforces your ability to do it, though. True. Yeah, that's true. It does. But, like but I, so I kind of get to the point where I'm like, I know that I should start now, but hey, brother. I've never started early. Uh, the thing is, some, some things I genuinely need to destroy. Like this, what happened with my this partner that I left going for going to this new partner really last minute was basically I just dragged my feet until they hung themselves. You know, it's like I just kept giving them rope to hang themselves with, and eventually they hung themselves, and I was just like, "Fuck you now." Now I can say "fuck you," <laughs> you know. But, but I didn't know I was doing that. I didn't know I was trying to set them up to let me say "fuck you" to them. Until after the fact. Sweep. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching Talking to Famous People. Uh, and I'll talk to you uh, later in another video soon enough, viewers at home.